The Untold History, a podcast by the Hispanic Council with the collaboration of the Spanish Ministry of Defense to get to know great Spanish figures in the history of the United States. Today, Manuel de Montiano. The fight for the rights of black people is nowadays an issue of key importance in the public agenda, but it's not something new. In the 60s of the previous century, the civil rights movement in the United States constituted one of the biggest social advancements in the country, with notable people such as Martin Luther King Jr. This wasn't the first time North American society advanced in that regard either. Before that movement, from 1861 to 1865, the United States had suffered the Civil War, the conflict that ceased slavery. Even that wasn't the first milestone in the fight for the emancipation of black people. Way before all of this, as early as 1514, and without the need of a conflict nor a civil war, the Spanish crown had already approved mixed marriages that blessed people from any race in the entirety of the American territories. At that time, a man known as Juan Latino, originally from America, became the first colored man to achieve his university studies and become a professor in the University of Granada. All we have just told is in perfect sync with the story of Manuel de Montiano, the person in charge of the first free blacks in North America. Free, formally and de facto, which shows the integrating and constructive spirit with which the Spanish crown always understood the American enterprise. Manuel de Montiano y Sopelana was born in Bilbao in 1685, in a wealthy family whose head was the general deputy of the Lordship of Biscaya. His uncle, Augustin de Montiano, was a famous playwright and the founder and first director of the Royal Academy of History of Spain. Since he was a child, he felt attracted to achieve a career in the military, and as a youngster, he enlisted in the army. He served for three years in the Regiment of Aragon and was later transferred to Darien in Panama. In 1719, he was promoted to the position of Grenadier Captain and left for Oran, nowadays Algeria, where he fought against the Arabs to defend the city. In 1737, he was designated Captain General and 32nd Governor of Florida. It was from then on that one of the most unknown yet laudable episodes in the Spanish legacy in North America took place. The General Montiano took charge of his position at a time of considerable tightening of tensions between Spain and England. The War of Jenkins' Ear was the unavoidable result of their strains, and the possessions of both crowns in North America became key scenarios of the fight. In that context, Florida and Georgia acted as the central battlefields. Manuel de Montiano stood out as governor of Florida due to his firm protection of the runaway slaves that fled from the British and Dutch plantations founding the first former slave settlement in North America. Our protagonist dedicated the fort of St. Teresa of Mose to receiving and sheltering the slaves that managed to escape, offering, with the full support and acknowledgement of the crown, a new and free life as subjects of the Spanish king. The price for liberty to the so-called Cimarrones was composed of two conditions, to embrace the Catholic faith and to commit to the defense of the territory. Fort Mose became a promised land, a dream to be achieved by many slaves and their families. As it was to be expected, what began as a slow dripping of people that risked everything for a life and freedom soon became a continuous flow of individuals that reached that sanctuary in search of a new existence. In 1738, 100 runaway slaves lived there with their families. The first to arrive in San Agustin were lodged in Spanish houses and did various jobs in exchange for a salary. To try and stop the exodus of slaves into Spanish lands, the British colonialists set up patrols, but the ingenuity of the escapees and their determination 
demonstrated that the patrols were ineffective most of the time. Some slave fugitives came from Port Royal, which is why, one time, the captain of that fortification, Caleb Davis, came personally to Fort Mose to demand the reinstatement of his own slaves or the payment of 7,600 pesos as retribution. Montiano denied both petitions, as he was under the protection of the Spanish law. The British were not only angry at the loss of slaves, but also because the rumors of the Spanish promised land were spreading like wildfire among their colonies and sparking slave revolts. Such as it was, it's not strange that after the beginning of the War of Jenkins' Ear, Fort Mose, with all its significance and implications, became a priority target. In 1740, the British governor of Georgia, James Oglethorpe, sent a great offensive with the objective of expelling the Spaniards from Florida. Mose was a building attached to the larger and more vital stronghold of Fort San Agustin, which also contained the Castillo de San Marcos as the last barrier against an attack. The initial assault took the Spaniards and their militias of black freed slaves by surprise, pushing them back to the castle where they stood their ground. Mose was taken by the English, who considered the fort a good launching platform from which to throw the final assault and take the castle. Those plans were truncated. Despite his numeric and supply disadvantage, Montiano prepared for a counterattack. In the middle of the night, along with the black militias and his Indian allies, they poured out of the Castillo de San Marcos, relentlessly attacking the British, who were inside the fort. It was a bloody and balanced fight, but in the end, and fearing the Spanish reinforcements from Havana, the Britons retreated. The victory had such a demoralizing effect on Oglethorpe that he ordered the withdrawal of his troops, and they left for Georgia. It took 12 years for the Fort Mose to be rebuilt, so the members of the black militias and their families were settled in San Augustine as free people. One of the most commemorated men of the counteroffensive was Francisco Menendez, one of the liberated slaves. His original name was Mandinga, and he had been born in Angola, where he was captured and sold as a slave to end up working for a plantation in South Carolina. He had reached Fort Mose leaving slavery behind him, and his leadership skills had propelled him to the position of captain. When the fort was rebuilt in 1752, Francisco was placed as its commander. Today, Fort Mose has been declared a National Historic Monument, an honor given by virtue of being the first territory which, under the protection of Manuel Montiano and the Spanish flag, was inhabited by free blacks in the time of slavery. Nowadays, every year in San Augustine, the Cross of Burgundy is waved for the city's anniversary day. The old Spanish flag is transported by a group of black men wearing the Spanish military uniforms of the time, as a reminder that 300 years ago, for Spain and its monarchy, black lives already mattered.